Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday, October 1st, 2016. And boy, the days and the weeks and the months are rolling along. Um, today and tomorrow is a Jewish holiday. Um, I believe it's the Feast of Trumpets on the Lord's calendar. Um, and, uh, you know, every time a feast that isn't fulfilled comes by, I keep my fingers crossed and pray to God that he takes us. Um, <laughs> things are getting really, really ugly in the world. War, death and destruction. You know, I wish I had better news, but there is. Jesus. He's the good news. He's the saving grace. He's our blessed hope. He's the one that if we believe on him and everything that he did on the cross and how he shed his blood for us to free us from sin and to wash us clean to stand before the Father in heaven and that he rose again on the third day and that he is the only propitiation of sins the father is so loving to send his son to clean up everything here for us so you know when we look at the world when we're in Christ we have a different view and I'll tell you honestly um, if I didn't have the Lord I would be terrified knowing what I know they'd have to, they'd have to tie me down I'd be paranoid out of my mind with fear but when you're in the body of Christ, when you're, when you're born again in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and He gives you His peace. So you're able to stay calm, cool and collected, and you're able to have um, stability, mental stability, and you have clarity of thought and you have your critical thinking cap and you don't react you can see everything you have this extra bionic vision that most people don't have you see the plan you see everything so your mind can't make up a story it's all very clear so don't uh, you know if you're if um, you see all this stuff and uh, you're terrified you would be terrified because it says in the Bible and I'm paraphrasing that when destruction comes men's hearts will fail them for fear of what they're seeing this we're in a transition here people I told you plenty of times that the Bible Okay, we're at the very end here. This is it. This is where we are in the age of the law. You know, first it started out with the Garden of Eden and then the law. And then Jesus came. He became the testator. He started the New Testament. The Jews rejected him. Preached to the Gentiles. Okay, and now that's the age of grace where salvation is a free gift if you believe and confess you're a sinner and and make the Lord you cannot go to heaven unless it's through the Lord Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach um, and then uh, the next thing to be fulfilled on that timeline is the church has to be removed because even though we see evil rising here and it's getting uglier and uglier it's still being restrained because 
the body of Christ is here. But once the body of Christ is taken out in the rapture, the restrainer will be removed and that evil is going to become so horrible. Okay, so horrible. That if you have a change of heart after the rapture, you're going to have to pray every second of your life with every breath for God to get you through. And I don't want anybody to have to go through that. You won't have to go through that if you accept Christ. And um, I know I usually say all of this at the end, but I believe Holy Spirit want me to open up with it. And uh, I also wanted to say that the picture that I posted yesterday, an amazing picture of a pro prophetic scene that the Lord put in the sky. He's done this before. He's put scenes and things in the sky for me. Uh, and um, I'm going to figure out a way to give you either the picture or to make a full screen video so that you can see it full screen on a laptop because there are many other things in that picture that um, I didn't point out or I, I haven't yet become aware of but I wanted to share it because uh, the Lord had gave, have give it, has given me the main storyline of that image. Uh, and I wanted to share that with you. And I can see already that other um, people uh, have been given similar messages that now this picture has tying confirmation or tying the, the knots for them, you know, uh, you know, making sense now for them because they got a little piece from the Lord and somebody else got a little piece from the Lord and this now gives you some more clarity. Um, so um, yeah, I'm going to see if I could do that later. But I'd like to, to give you a devotional. I know I'm over time already, I'm over seven minutes. So I'd like to pray the Our Father. So please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen thank you heavenly father for another day thank you for these ministries thank you for answering prayer um, father i lift up debbie from uh prayers online uh, please, Father, help this medicine, her body to respond to this new medicine, to bring up her platelets. I beg you, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you. Uh, thank you for, for answering so many prayers, Father, and thank you for all my blessings. I, uh, we can't wait. To, we love and adore you, Father. We can't wait for you to come and take us home. Uh, please, Father, keep your hand of protection upon all your children. In Jesus' name, amen. And this one is called, um, What You're Asking. How much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? And that's from Matthew 7, 11. Perhaps you've wondered, how can I be sure I'm asking God for the right thing? How do I know my request is in line with his will? Such thoughts may be causing you undue anxiety. First, realize the Holy Spirit indwells you to will and to work for his good pleasure. And that's from Philippians 2.13. Not only does he help you pray, but he will show you what to pray to remain on his path for your life. And that's from Romans 8.26 and 27. Second, God wants you to know his will. In fact, he's even more motivated to accomplish it than you are. So when you're seeking him faithfully, 
you don't ever have to worry you'll miss you'll miss it and that's from Psalms 25 12 friend if you're asking for something that would ultimately hurt you your Heavenly Father will change your heart it may take time but he wants the absolute best for you so don't worry about whether you're asking the right thing rather be sensitive to his guidance and trust him to lead you to his good and perfect gifts and here's a prayer we can say father I trust you to lead me in your perfect will thank you for loving and protecting and providing for me amen I can't tell you how many times in the past I asked for things that would have completely destroyed me and the Lord uh, saved me from myself um, and even in other things too um, in December of 2010 I had an open vision of my brother he came to me in all, all glory how beautiful he was oh. and um, that was right before I was getting sick and uh, I had lost my mother uh, just probably less than a year and I believe the Lord sent my brother I was grieving so hard and it was getting me I was getting sick and um, physically sick from everything couldn't handle it and um, to this day I won't ask the father to give me a vision of my mother because even though I'm stable from from the grief now I don't know how I would be if I saw her in glory so only the father will give you what you're able to handle I, I remember about a year ago I did a video on it and the Holy Spirit in my car if you go back and look at it it's amazing that morning I asked if I could see a little piece of the father and uh, he showed himself to me in the car and um, and then he played this song uh, he was in my back seat and then the song came on turn around look at me and I, I just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit so it was like I was in the presence of the Lord and I wasn't ready for it and I started crying uncontrollably and um, I don't even know how I made it home I was like maybe a couple miles from my house when this happened pulled over in my car and you know you have to be careful what you ask for so you know now when I ask the father I'm sh <laughs> I make I t always follow it up and say if you think I can handle it because <laughs> I don't want to ask for something I can't handle. Believe me, that was enormous. What I felt, you know, can imagine, and probably we can't imagine how it's going to feel to actually be right in front of the Father. Oh, that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need to be transformed. We're not able to handle it. We'll sizzle up like a piece of bacon <laughs> in a frying pan. <laughs> Just making a joke. <laughs> okay. The next one is called Knowing God. Will, will human ever hurt, right? Knowing God. Set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. And that's from 1 Chronicles 22. 19. Never underestimate how significant you are to God or how important He wants you to be. You were created to know Him, to fellowship with Him, and represent Him to others. Sadly, when you only know facts about the Lord rather than truly experiencing Him, you may not fully grasp how deeply He loves you or the wonderful plans He has for your life. You'll also sense an abiding void in your life that nothing can fill. Yeah, I remember one night I was uh, I was praying uh, 
in the bed and a Holy Spirit descended upon me and I could feel him in my belly swell and uh, I knew it was him I felt electricity in my body all over and uh, I knew it was him and and at that moment I asked him a question I never asked Holy Spirit a question while he was rising up on me and I said you love me father and instantly tears came flowing from my eyes and and I wasn't crying he did that to tell me yes I love you and it was the closest communication that I've ever had with the father it was instant I asked him a question and he made tears come out of my eyes to tell me yes I love you so yes the father does love you he loves you in a way that you can you can't even imagine we don't we don't even have the capacity to feel the the enormity of love that is in heaven and that the father has we only you can only taste a little bit of it and because we're carnal our flesh is carnal that that love uh, is becomes more fleshly instead of heavenly heavenly love is agape it's not of the flesh it's of the soul it's of the spirit it's of the heart so consider are you seeking information about the father or are you really getting to know him are you pursuing God to receive a blessing or is your interest intimate fellowship with your creator the father wants you to understand far more about him than just what he can do for you he wants you to experience his eternal all-sufficient loving presence he wants to satisfy the deepest parts of your being and heal the wounded places of your heart. So surrender yourself to him with a complete and intimate trust. Be vulnerable with him. Hold nothing back and discover the one your soul truly desires. And that's what I tell people if you have a hard time expressing uh, your innermost feelings to the Father. Write them down. Write him a letter. Same thing. And it's easier. And put that letter at the foot of the cross. And it's the same thing. You'll see how easy, if you write it, you'll see how easy it flows. Easy. And he loves it. And here's a prayer we can say. Lord, I want to know you, draw me into your loving presence and reveal yourself to me. Amen. And he will. He will. Just don't give up. He will. It may take time. Some, 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 it takes longer than others. It depends on how still you are and your sensitivity level. And, um, you know, I pray everybody comes. I, I don't want anybody to be left here. So, it's going to get, the world is going to get worse and worse. It's not going to get any better, people, because we're, this is all prophesied in the Bible. We are at the end, the beginning of the end, okay? The end is the last seven-year period. Now, the world is not going to be destroyed like the whole globe the planet but everything on it is going to be redone at the end of the seven year tribulation and Jesus was going to reign on the earth in the millennial kingdom so I can't wait for that day because there's not going to be any more evil we won't have to be battling this anymore Finish the race. You made it this far. As horrifying as it is, it's glorious to be living in this time when we know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to come and appear on the earth. Wow. What a gift to be here to see that. I pray to stay alive for it. And on that note, I wish everybody a wonderful day. Be well. I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget it.
Never forget it. He loves you. And he's coming soon. Keep looking up.